guys, I'm here with Justin from BTM Machines. Uh, we're also joined by uh, Dustin and Jeremy. I did say it right. I said Justin first, right? I did say it right, right? I, I, th this is the, the rhyme in my head was confusing. Uh, but we have, of course, Dustin and Jeremy over there. Uh, they are over by our Bitcoin uh, BTM machine, our Ben ATM machine. Uh, can we turn that side? Cassie, can you turn it sideways for us? It rolls. Uh, it rolls. Well, no, we want like Vanna White, Vanna White over here. Yeah, we want Vanna White to do it. Yeah, does it? Does it yeah, there you go. Look, you can see the side of it. Yeah, can you zoom out? Right there. There you go. There it is. Uh, check that out. Uh, so uh, now, uh, smasher of the wall. I'm just kidding. <laughs> so, okay. So, uh, Justin, I guess let's start. Let's start with you here. Uh, people saw that we went and we visited. Uh, we visited your office. Uh, we unveiled the uh, Bitcoin ATM. What's that noise? Is it a light? Is it through? Okay. Can you just can you just remove the light, Cassie? I would just remove it. Yeah, just unplug it. it we don't need it. I think it's satanic, guys. It's satanic. We have to unplug it. Here we go. We got uh, how many tech people does it take to uh, turn off? Wow, guys. Guys, it's not plugged in. We are in the middle of the movie The Grudge or The Ring or something. Uh, golly, the, the crypto adoption monster came right out of the Bitcoin ATM. It was amazing. Uh, and here we are. Okay, so uh, we finally got that fixed. Uh, so, Justin, uh, tell us a little bit. About, uh, about how you guys started, about your company, and we talked about it a little bit for a few weeks, just kind of expand on it. I, I, I will say for the record, this is one of the coolest companies, the coolest company we've ever worked with by a long shot. A long, we love stake. I'm talking about what we're doing in terms of actually adoption of Bitcoin. Uh, these guys are phenomenal. Uh, you guys are gonna find that out. So talk a little bit about how you guys started and what you do. All right, so um, I started atmmachines.com in 2006. That's about 18 years ago. And when Bitcoin ATMs came out, I kind of just knew how to fulfill at mass. So in 2021, February of 2021, I started BTMMachines.com. And a BTM is just a Bitcoin teller machine. Right. And it's a lot different than the ATM industry, though. You have uh, independent money transmitter licenses per state, AMS, AML, KYC, compliance programs. So... I brought in, that's where Jeremy and Dustin come in. We have, uh, I call him a rocket scientist. Uh, <laughs> Dustin used to send satellites into space, a master's in engineering. Uh, Jeremy, I hired him. He's a former uh, CEO of BTM Compliance. He helped write the uh, crypto kiosk laws for the state of Florida. Wow. So wow. The, these are the experts, and I just knew how to build the business, fulfill, install, but a, a lot of the back end stuff, regulations, everything goes through these guys. Yeah. Well, that's awesome. We're going to get more, more into some of that stuff as we go on here. Uh, but, uh, like, I guess one question that everybody who would be watching this would want to know, if you've just gotten into crypto or maybe you've seen them before, but why would someone want to use, uh, like, a crypto ATM, Bitcoin ATM, Bitcoin ATM? Why would someone want to use that? Okay. With exchanges, you know, like, I, I just literally, it was a couple days ago, I went on Coinbase to grab just, like, 300 bucks of Ethereum. And... I bought the th Ethereum and I wanted to move it to a wallet and they held on to it. And it was another day, another two days, another three days, and it was only a few hundred bucks of crypto and Coinbase was holding on to it for like four or five days. That kind of stuff happens with exchanges. If you want to walk up to an exchange and buy 20 grand, 30 grand, 40 grand, 50 grand, there's usually you have to ramp up to get there, right? You have to take time to be able to have the right to be able to purchase that much. With a machine like this, Today, you could walk up, put $20,000 into it, and you can have your crypto in 30 minutes to an hour. So the advantage of these machines is it's fast, and you can move a lot of money through it. And you don't, if you're getting a token, for example, you don't have to go on to a swap. You don't have to like get the contract, move it over, and find a wallet, and connect it to the swap, and then make sure you have something to pay for the gas, if it's Ethereum or BNB or whatever. You don't have to do all those steps. With this, you just, you have your phone with your wallet. Depending on how much you buy, you have an ID, you throw some cash in it, and you can have your crypto in 30 minutes to an hour. And there's no, we don't, we're not gonna hold on to it and say, no, you can't move it around. It's just literally going from our wallet to their wallet, Speed and convenience is why people use these. Yep. And touch on anonymity. Yeah, so it's... Oh, sure. I mean, yeah. you want to touch on that? Yeah, so it's, it's 
it's pseudo anonymous. It's not it's not 100% anonymous just like anything else that's that's in crypto. So, you know, when you're using your your wallets and you're providing things like your name, obviously those things can get back and people can tie those things together. So, using an appropriate wallet and just understanding exactly that it's pseudo anonymous. Yeah, I, I think that's that's very important. Um, and and one thing that you know, onboarding people into crypto, for instance, uh, one thing that Coinbase has definitely done better than everybody else is user experience. Uh, that's why, even though the fees suck and there's a lot of stuff about Coinbase you hate, a lot of people still uh, that's what they use. Uh, so talk a little bit about for you guys, because I would think with with Bitcoin ATMs, I, I mean, really the thing that separates these machines are the fees, the level of anonymity, the the, the process the KYC. Um, and then also the actual user experience itself. I know y'all is very smooth and I like it. Some have been quirky. I think, uh, you know, scan the QR code now today is pretty cool. Back then you had to get paper wallets in a lot of the machines. So talk a little bit about the, about the user experience uh, for the machines here and how, do peop how long do people, uh, you know, how, what's the process for, from when they put the money in to when they actually have the crypto? Yeah. Okay, so user experience is like this. You just walk up to the machine, you just tap on it and it'll ask if you want to buy or sell coins. And if you choose buy, you choose the coin you want. We've got Bitcoin here, you could choose Bitcoin. Go ahead and tap that. And then you choose how much you want to buy. And the reason we have this broken up is because at the end of the day, every crypto company in the United States, no one's gonna do a totally anonymous transaction. Those are illegal. So you, we have to comply with laws. So that's why we have these different tiers because the government requires us to ask you for a little bit more the more you spend. So depending on what you choose, Pick the first one, for example. We just do a text verification. You don't need to create an account. You don't need to get approved or reviewed or anything. You just get a text verification. You get the code. The very next step is you scan your wallet, and the very next step is you put the cash in. And then if it's under 300 bucks, you'll automatically get it. It's instant, and you just walk away. That's it. There's no calling anybody. There's no none of that. You want to actually go ahead and just purchase some Bitcoin? Sure, I can do that. All right, nice. Watch it. Yeah, let's do it. Here we go. Okay, we good? We good? Yeah. Okay, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to cover my phone number. <laughs> and by the way, uh, crypto ATMs are the only way to turn cash into crypto and crypto okay. back into cash. Yeah, that's a good there point. You, go. yeah, okay. you could do peer to peer, but you've got to know somebody all the time. Yeah. So uh, you've got a guy for that. Okay, so I'm going to scan the wallet. Oh, scan QR code. There we go. I'm going to and put the cash in. It takes, up, it takes one note every two seconds, so you can buy $500 every 10 seconds. You just put the cash in, and when you're done, you hit finish, like Dustin just did. And you can print a receipt. And we'll text you a receipt, and that's it. Just bought $100 of Bitcoin. Just bought $100 of Bitcoin. Now, if you buy more, it's important to know that if you, you can buy up to $20,000 on this, and if you buy up to $20,000, there's a little more we have to do. We have to ask you for your ID, and yes, we have to ask for your social, we do. Um, but don't worry, we don't have a back door to the government where we're just funneling information over to them. It's all within our database. So, and that's it. In the process, when you buy a lot more, we do have somebody call you and say, hey, we just wanna make sure you know, you're not buying heroin or anything, and uh, make sure that the way you got the money is legitimate, and we're all good, and everybody's happy, and they'll do a check. And then within 30 minutes or so, you'll have your, your crypto. Yeah. Uh, here, here's a question. We had somebody uh, in the chat talk about uh, something about uh, their money stuck in a Bitcoin ATM. Uh, is there any time like people's money could get stuck and they might need a refund or something like that? Does that happen? And, and what's the process uh, for you know, how, how, how they get their money back? Absolutely. So, I mean, these machines are just like anything else, just like a, a computer. I mean, things happen. And so occasionally, you know, we'll have like an unsafe bill jam or, you know, or maybe the, the screen freezes, the computer freezes. And so we have a process where, you know, we can see that. We get to, you know, look in the back end. We can tell like where the error occurred, um, on which bill, how much money you've put in. And then we have the ability to basically go through and, and fix that and then provide a refund of that money or complete a transaction if it meets the KYC requirement. Okay. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna bring this up. Somebody on here said they had a refund that was stuck and they're like, if somebody's got one that's stuck, uh, what's, what's their, pro is there like an email they can, uh, I, you guys, you, the person that said that uh, in this chat, uh, you can email us, office at BitBoy Crypto, or no, that's not right, office at newworldfinance.io, and we will look into it, okay? There, I'll just say that. That's what I told them about that.
uh, wanted to address it. Uh, so there we go. we're going to help 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 uh, see if if that is something that's a real thing that occurred. Uh, it's not just somebody coming in here saying that. Then we'll get that fixed for you. Um, okay. So uh, point is, uh, I, I want to bring up. You talked about uh, the information there. Um, where are uh, these machines at? Where are they located? So we're currently in 28 states here in the United States. And if you go to our website, b2machines.com, there's a map right there on the front page. It will show you where all of our machines are. So it's in 28 states right now. I could not, I don't remember all the exact ones, but that's where we are. Yeah, that's right. Well, Georgia, for sure. Oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Georgia. Georgia's uh, a hotbed of Bitcoin ATMs, really. Uh, we have a lot of Bitcoin ATM companies here. Yeah. And, and and like gas stations are typical, smoke shops are typical, liquor stores are typical. And the reason those are chosen is because usually have the good hours, easy access, quick to get in and out of, and so that's kind of stores are located in. Yeah, absolutely. I know, uh, Cassian, I've been talking to people already, uh, trying to get some of these in there. Um, so, and, and you guys have grown so fast, so quickly, it's amazing. And just so everybody knows that we did. Uh, somebody's asking about this. This is not sponsored at all. They've never paid us a dime. Uh, we're wearing their partners with Bitcoin, uh, and that's how how all this is going on. And, and they're local, uh, Atlanta company. I uh, have Atlanta office here, and so uh, very easy. We love Atlanta companies, obviously. Uh, so, but they are national across the United States. Um, now, if somebody wants to find out more, they want to find out, like, uh, you know, uh, some of the details of the fees and things like that, where can they go to find out more information? So that's on our website. You can find out, there's uh, the map of how to find the machines. There's little frequently asked questions on, like, how much can I buy, or what if I don't have a wallet? There's a link there that tells you how to get a wallet. And then we also have a little chat bubble on the website. So if you have questions you want to ask directly, you can just click on that chat bubble, go to our support team, and they can answer your questions. They can walk you through a transaction. They can answer fee questions if you have questions about that, and so on and so forth. So um, that is when I was, I was looking at a couple of the questions here um, that I thought were pretty interesting. Um, one person said, do all the machines uh, allow you to sell crypto? Because he said that a lot of machines, they only allow you to buy. Our portfolio is unique in that every single one of our machines has the functionality for both. Absolutely. But I will say with a disclaimer, the sell functionality, this machine, we don't stock a bunch of cash in it. It only has as much cash in it as people are using it. Exactly. So what happens is someone walks up, maybe puts in $5,000 to buy crypto, mm. and then the machine has that available to sell. But if no one's been there, or if it's been emptied and someone tries to do a sell, they, they're not going to be able to sell. Yeah. But the machine will tell you that when you go to the machine. What, what are the percentages of, of buys versus sells on? on 90 percent or buy. Uh, that's what I figured. So, so the the sells there usually should probably unless they're big sells, there should be money in there to cover it. I would think. Usually there is. Yeah, yeah. I would think so. I don't know how fast they pull them or how much they pull them, but uh, and then also I think we're going to get to this. I, I'm sorry when you were finishing your answer up there, I was down here looking at this. Um, we will get we will get to that question. Uh, I think down here. So, um, okay. So, uh, can people buy in? Like, do you guys have any other ways that people can buy crypto or like could buy Bitcoin, for instance, or, or Bitcoin or Ethereum or uh, soon to be uh, some other coins, I believe. Which, uh, you want to say what that is, right? That's the X, XRP is coming. XRP. So on these machines, going to be uh, all these machines across the country, Bitcoin, Ethereum, Bitcoin, XRP. Uh, guys, don't get much better than that. Uh, that's like the, the holy quadrinity or something. Uh, so, uh, yeah, but is there another way uh, to buy crypto uh, outside just the machines? The ability to do transactions uh, over the counter, so OTC transactions, um, we can make rather large transactions. So if somebody wants to, you know, make a really big purchase and they're willing to go ahead and do, a, you know, a bank wire over to us, then we can go ahead and do the, all the KYC compliance and function an actual uh, OTC transaction. And again, that's also instantaneous. You know, we do that right over the phone or over a Zoom meeting, and uh, it goes directly to your wallet. There's, there's no stops, there's no waits for 24, 48 hours on, on an exchange and gives you the ability to bypass a custodial wallet and yeah. go directly to something that is, that is yours. Or with Bitcoin, you get to uh, bypass Uniswap. Yeah, exactly. Oh yeah, same with the machines yep. too, yeah. So, and if you don't want to carry around 50 grand in a bag to go uh, you know, buy, buy crypto in the machine. Yeah. yeah, 50 grand every two seconds takes a while. Uh, if you can put up that email address, I told her to, to email in the chat there. Um, okay, so uh, I wanted to ask you guys about um, uh, the so somebody had the question somebody asked in here, um, and they asked, "Can they get one? Can they buy one of the machines?" And I know you guys have like a lot of different ways that people can get involved, kind of on uh, the other side of this. I think a couple, a couple different opportunities. 
um, if you want to talk about that, you know, the people were asking how they could host one and things. So, so um, I built btmmachines.com kind of based on my atmmachines.com business model. And atmmachines.com, we own over 700 ATMs, but we process another 2,600 nationwide. And what that means is if you buy an ATM from us, we do the processing, so we make money whenever that ATM does a transaction, but it never comes from the ATM owner's pocket. So when a customer uses a machine, we connect them to their bank, and their bank pays us on the back end. And we also earn that processing fee on the machines that we own. Well, with the Bitcoin ATM company, we own, I think, over 100 of the uh, machines out there, but the rest are investor-owned or merchant store-owned directly. And what that is is you can actually buy the machine, the Bitcoin ATM, and plug into our program. So we handle the money transmitter licenses, the KYC, AML, the crypto that's sold, the liquidity, the armored carry pickup, everything that's involved we handle. So your only job is to secure a location to put your Bitcoin ATM and market it. Just sit back and make money. Everything's automated. Armored Carry picks up the uh, cash. And we look at that as a partnership because it expands yeah. our footprint. We keep a portion of the fee, almost one third, but the rest goes back to the Bitcoin ATM owner. Yeah. And we do all the work. So a lot of people will come to us and want us to build their business for them. They'll be like, well, I'll, I'll write you a check. Yeah go get us locations and it's like that's not our, our business model like if we get locations we're putting our own machines in there so if you want a machine mm -hmm. yeah if you want a machine you need to move, move it up here. you yeah, need sorry, to buy sorry, you, you need to buy one and find your own place or if you own the store directly you can buy it and place it in your own store but we do not get locations for you yeah so i think uh you know it, it shouldn't be hard to find a good place for these. Uh, any place that uh, you know you would see one of these at, uh, just an ATM that doesn't have one, would be a good target. Uh, but I think uh, you guys also have a really cool machine too. And, I, and I've, uh, you know, this idea is something that I, I think is gonna definitely be the future, uh, maybe in the next three or four years. But it, a combo machine, a Bitcoin and regular cash uh, ATM machine. Uh, so you guys want to talk about that? What's cool about what we've done is those machines have actually been around probably for six or seven, who knows, maybe more years, where you have, it looks like a big kiosk like this, and there's an ATM in it, and there's a Bitcoin ATM in it, but most companies don't do that because the, there's a concern for commingling funds. So we have a patented door on the inside that segregates the funds, so the machine now, you can go to a gas station and you can say, hey, you have that ATM right there, you have that Bitcoin ATM there, how about you go half the floor space, get one machine with one vendor, You'll get the same revenue from the ATM, and we'll throw you some commission on the Bitcoin ATM side, and you're giving up the floor space of only one machine. Wow. And they free up the other machine now, and it's a brand new machine, and it looks nicer, and it's got a beautiful touch screen. Yeah. And so that's, that's what we've started to deploy. We've got about yep. 40 of them out right now. Yeah, that's a really killer idea, um, I think. So uh, that's one thing. Um, uh, what other kind of developments uh, do you guys have uh, coming down the line? Then we're going to talk about FTX a little bit. Okay, yeah. So... Um, we're working on deploying that machine, that all-in-one machine, and then we've actually realized that tokens, the on-ramp is difficult for a lot of tokens. Yeah. Like if people aren't technically savvy and they're used to dealing with the swap, and the, like when Justin showed me a first token to buy, I was like, it's got like a headache. I was like, <laughs> oh, okay, wait, wait, what do I do? Like, and if I don't do this perfectly right, what's gonna happen? You know, money can just disappear. So we're actually realizing there's more tokens that have a need for just a very simple on-ramp. Mm -hmm. So we're in conversations with other other groups to help them out, the same yeah. kind of thing, mm -hmm. like we're doing with Bencoin. And so we've got more of those coming you know, down yeah. the line. I think it's really awesome. And I think that, uh, you know, what, guys, what we're doing with Bencoin is all about adoption. And we're serious about it. It's not just what we say, okay? We've actually been working on this partnership. Uh, Cassie, can you come up here for a second? I mean, my gosh, Cassie. Uh, Justin, can you, can you let Cassie just one second here? You just stand, yeah. Uh, you don't have to go off screen, uh, Justin, because I would might look tall. Oh, thank, thank, you, thank you, thank you, thank uh, you. Cass Cassie is the CEO of Bitcoin, and uh, she gets one hundred percent of the credit for this. Uh, at least get some credit too, as well. Uh, but uh, Cassie set this up, and there's a lot of people who say, "Oh, you Cassie, you're not your CEO. She shouldn't be CEO." Guys, she is phenomenal, and her credibility through the roof. And you guys are going to see that over the next several years. I promise that. Uh, and I want you, Cassie, you get all the credit for it. Talk a little bit about uh, this partnership and why it was important and what your idea. And then if you could go into a little bit about 
the idea of onboarding through these machines with our wallet and 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 how w maybe with the meme coin stuff you want to talk about that too mm -hmm. uh yeah. here i'm pulling down a little bit for you absolutely there you go so meme coins are the entry into crypto for a lot of people i mean most people that i talk to that don't know anything about crypto they've heard they've heard of bitcoin maybe dogecoin shiba inu it's because their brother's cousin's sister's brother put $100 into a meme coin and it blew up and it turned into $20,000, mm -hmm. right? And that's what piques the interest of, of people who are not in crypto. They don't care about the tech. They don't want to read all the, the blockchain analytics. They're not interested in that part. So essentially what we're doing is we're going to make it easier for those people to onboard into crypto using meme coins. Now, if you go, if you go to, uh, for example, Coinbase, right? So with the, with the wallet we're coming out with, on Coinbase, you go on and you're gonna have to, you're still gonna have to put a contract address in onto their wallet. It's, it's the same with MetaMask. Mm -hmm. Most of those coins do not auto populate. Mm -hmm. And so if I buy into a meme coin, I'm telling my brother about it, and he's like, oh, I'm interested. And then I, I'm, what, I'm gonna walk him through the process of setting up a MetaMask and then try to explain, like, yeah, you have to go to this janky website and copy this contract address. And you have to go insert it here and make sure it's the, it just, it doesn't work. And so we're streamlining that process. Um, when our wallet comes out, we're gonna be offering, uh, other meme coins that are auto-populated in there, it's gonna make it s so simple to get your friends and your family involved in, in buying meme coins, right? Where they're actually gonna make money. Um, and, and ideally that piques their interest into, you know, th the more serious projects, um, layer one blockchains, et cetera. So in partnering with these guys, essentially uh, any of anybody who's interested in buying Ben, we get a lot of comments like that. How do I buy Ben coin? I'm really interested in buying Ben coin. Um, Regardless of the reason, maybe it's just because, you know, it's Ben's project or, yeah. or whatever it is, but they don't know how to use MetaMask. They're, they're limited to Coinbase. So by working with these guys, we're going to make that process a lot simpler. Um, and they are th we're so aligned in what we're trying to accomplish with, with crypto adoption. And this is, this is just step one, right? This is the very beginning. Um, they have a ton of great ideas. They're awesome to work with. This has been a long time in the making, and I was really excited to talk about it. It's, it's you know, the last few months, there's been a lot that we've been working on, um, but, you know, it, it's getting serious, and this is this yeah. is the first step of that. Yeah. I'm really excited. And you guys are going to see uh, uh, the wallet. Uh, uh, Cassie's the brainchild behind a lot of the stuff we're doing. You know, we have other people like Elise and Dan at NSL, and uh, am I leaving anybody out? Lithius. Uh, we love you, Lithius. <laughs> Uh, yeah, uh, really, you know, so, um, yeah, just know, uh, we're doing real stuff. This is a real project and we're really making a lot of progress. So, uh, I wanted, wanted to give Ca Cassie well, her credit here, yeah. uh, because she definitely deserves it a hundred percent. So thank you, Cassie. We appreciate you. Um, okay. All right. Back, back to this, uh, guys. Uh, so, uh, Cassie and I were in, uh, in New York city yesterday morning and we were at the FTX hearing, uh, as, as a lot of people know. And we were, unfortunately, uh, we were in the overflow. We didn't get to go into the main courthouse, courtroom. We were in the courthouse, but we were in a different courtroom in the jury box with a TV and, and audio. So we were there live. But it was raining yesterday morning, and, uh, you know, uh, my hair, you know, I definitely didn't want it to be wet. Uh, it was me, guys. It was me. I needed a number. You're such a diva. Ah, guys, I need a number. I was, my makeup, I was afraid it was going to run. Thank you. Appreciate that. Uh, this is uh, wake up, uh, go to the airport and come here. You know, that this is the air style today. I did put three drops of water on it, I'll be honest. Uh, but the point is, is that um, <coughs> uh, we, we were in New York City and we were there. And because you, you have watched my live stream yesterday, because of the way that it happened and we had to get the umbrella, we, we were late, uh, not to the hearing. We were still there at 720, but we wanted to get there at six and we got there late because we had to wait for something to open at 7 a.m. to get the umbrella. And so we missed being in the front of the line. However, the, my luck was that because that occurred, I got to come face to face and close a couple other arcs that I had. And one of those, I came face to face right next to Barbara Freed and Joe Bankman. We were literally in line. I was within a half a foot from them. I got to watch their conversations. I got to watch their mannerisms. And, you know, it, when you see someone in real life and you see the way they act and they talk and their, their mannerisms, their countenance, you know, it's, it's, it's very interesting. Um, but I was glad finally they're the main people in this situation, and Dan Freeberg as well, that I've never been face to face with. I don't expect to come face to face with him. Uh, but uh, it was really cool to do that. And then Adam Moskowitz, the FTX attorney, came in uh, that I battled with and had the, the big thing where I took the picture in the Bahamas with the pig and <laughs> we had the contempt in court and all that stuff. I never actually threatened him. All that was false. And. Uh, I ran into him yesterday and, uh, you know, it kind of looked like this. Like I looked over at him and was like, 
And he looked at me and he was like, Ben Armstrong? Is that, and is that you? Is, is that you? And I was like, yeah, we just kind of looked at each other like we don't know what to do, you know? And so uh, I had actually actively said uh, that I was letting Adam Moskowitz go. I, I said this to Cassie like several, several months ago because I have much bigger enemies now. And that's what I did. <laughs> is, that's what I did. Or I, I, that's what, what I actually said. I realized I had much bigger enemies than you. Uh, and so that's what I said to him. I actually chased him down. Uh, <laughs> I did chase him down. He left. And I was like, you know what? I want to go talk to this guy. And so I, I was like, Cassie, hold on. I ran out, out there and I stopped him. I said, Adam, Adam. I, that's what I told him. I said, look, uh, you know, I realized I had much bigger enemies than you. And, uh, you know, I, I'm sorry things got so intense between us. And he said that he was glad to see me be able to move on and get off. I was voluntarily dismissed because I never promoted FTX. And because of that, I got to, I got to say to him face to face, you have to understand now that you, want, you see everything, why I was so upset about being included in this. I was responsible. I've said this many times. Many people have told me I saved their life savings. I saved tons of money for them by warning them to get off of FTX. Um, and, uh, you know, I should – look, guys, I'm humble, okay? But that's something that should be celebrated, not someone who should be attacked. And so, um, you know, talking to Justin and these guys, actually, you guys were actually some of the people – that we saved from FTX. So you guys want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so I, the day that she went live and had that SBF, I actually went back to that text message and we were looking at it. Um, I sent them the screen recording and I was like, BitBoy just had a meltdown. <laughs> 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 that, that's literally what my it text was. said. And uh, we immediately, what, within an hour or two after I sent y'all that clip, Dustin and Telia, we removed everything from FTX. Yeah, we had who Ben was back then, but because Justin followed him, he's like, no, you got to trust this guy. We have to move the money <laughs> off FTX. I was like, whatever. I don't know who this guy is online. I don't know what's happening, but we'll move yeah, it off. We'll and within it. a week, no access to the account anymore. Yeah, wow. Yeah. 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 So uh, that, that's a real thing. And, and I've, gotten, I've gotten so many messages from people like that. And look, uh, this situation here, they said a couple hundred thousand dollars. That's a lot of money. Uh, but I've had people who tell me they saved their life savings because I told them to get their money off FTX. And look, that may be $6,000. That may, that may be $2,000. It may not be a lot of money. But what is important is we warn people about this, and now uh, the FTX drama with Adam Moskowitz with the lawsuit is completely over now. I got closure on that. I got to talk to him face to face. Chasing Sam down to the Bahamas and throughout this entire thing, we, you know, meeting Joe and Barbara face to face, and um, you know, uh, obviously they were. Barbara was the one that called the co uh, called security on me. Uh, I heard her on the phone down there in the Bahamas. She knew who I was. Uh, she didn't look at me and act like she knew who I was, but you know she does, and and so. Um, and that to me is kind of like she's obviously standing right next to me and she's acting a little bit. You know, she's acting like she don't see me. She don't know who I am. She called security on us. We, we heard it. it's on it's on the, the Twitter space. I think you can hear it um, uh, muffled, but you can. And, and so the whole thing is, is that it's really cool to see a closure of this arc in a lot of ways. And now Sam, he, he's gotten 25 years and we can make this argument of whether that's fair or not. I do believe 25 years is fair. Um, I think I didn't want to see more than 30. 30 I could have been okay with. I think 40, 50, look, they gave Bernie Madoff life sentences. He was so old they knew, he, like, there's no negative to giving him that. He was going to die in jail anyways. There, there was no, no uh, look, if they'd given him the same thing they gave Sam, he was going to die anyways, and everybody knew that. So the, the point is, is that I think by the time Sam's 50, 50, well, he might get out early because of good behavior, and then we'll have to watch what happens. Because I, I do believe, like the judge very clearly said, He'll do this again. I think if he gets out too early, he will. I think if technology passes a little bit, he gets a little more irrelevant. Uh, I think that it's going to be very unlikely for him to kind of come into a new technology age and all of a sudden still be boy wonder uh, at, at 45 years old or something. So I, I think he gets 10 or 15 years of quality life at the end. I'd be okay with that. What, first of all, let's start with this. And then we want to move into uh, talking about debt box uh, because, uh, you know, we're talking about government stuff here and, and all this. Uh, so, so what's y'all's opinion on Sam and what, what happened yesterday in court? I, I think it was just, I, I, I think, 25 years, so that's, that's a hard pill to swallow. Yeah. And speaking of debt box. Yeah, what do you want to know? <laughs> okay, okay so, 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 look, so here we go. So 25 years is fair. I think a lot of people feel that way. So we're going to move on from that. But we want to talk about, like, obviously, one of the things with FTX was Sam was able to run unchecked, and Gary Gensler met with him, and several, at least a couple times we know documented, and right there underneath his nose was the largest criminal fraud, according to the judge yesterday, I've said it before too, the largest criminal fraud we've ever seen in the world, 
and, and the SEC caught with their pants down on that situation, but they, they project, 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 and say, oh, but look what we're doing over here and here and here. We've, we put more people away. Though. Look at all the people we prosecuted, blah, 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 blah. Kim Kardashian, we got the one right there, I tell you what. But, um, you know, it, this story here about debt box is one that is going, it like defies logic uh, that this is going on. And you're going to hear more and more about this on this channel and some other channels as well. I'm sure we'll talk about it. But let's get into talking a little bit about first, what is Debtbox? So uh, I'm not an official representative of Debtbox, but I, I happen to know the project kind of well. So what they do is they sell uh, software licenses to people, and that software license does crypto mining, just like uh, you, you buy like a Ethereum node or a, a Helium node or whatever, like these nodes, right? So they have software nodes that are hosted you know, on the cloud. So that's what they sell, but the, also you can get their token, their debt token, on the open market. You can get it on PancakeSwap. It's a BNP token. Uh, so what, the, what, what their project does is every time they have a license, a new license, it's actually tied to a real-world asset, whether it's aluminum or whether it's natural gas or whether it's oil or whether it's uh, exploration technology with satellites or whether it's even water or farmland. And what they do is that project basically tokenizes that particular business, whether it's oil, natural gas, aluminum, or whatever. And so what's amazing is you have real world things connected to crypto. Mm -hmm. And so people get these software nodes to create the ecosystem, and that gives them, you know, they get token generated from mining. And uh, it's a really unique ecosystem, it's actually worldwide, and most of their the owners of nodes are outside of the United States. But it's a really cool way that they have figured out how to get crypto into legitimate industries across the world. And so that's effectively what it is. And the SEC didn't like that. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, look, you, you look back at Binance and, you know, Binance has been in trouble with the government for a long time on a lot of different things. Uh, should they be in trouble with the government for a lot of different things? Uh, maybe some of the things. Um, but one of the things that they did that really pissed the SEC off was tokenizing those assets. Now you've got SNX, you got synthetics, right? That is a project that tokenizes assets, uh, you know, regular stocks, Apple stock, puts it on the blockchain, things like that. Um, but uh, when it came to um, uh, the tokenization of, um, what was I talking about? I lost my train of thought, Cassie, what was I talking about? SNX, right? So Binance, uh, so that's a token that does that with the blockchain. Binance, they opened up synthetic asset stocks for, I think it was Tesla, I think it was Apple, I think it was uh, maybe Amazon, I, I can't remember exactly all the ones, Meta. They opened up tokenized versions of those stocks, and the SEC shot that down real quick. Now, why they took them down, who it was, I mean, it was SEC pressure, I'm positive. Um, and I think, I think that's documented. If not, guys, there's no way it was anybody else. So they had to remove those. So the government for long, for many years now has already been trying to come after synthetic assets. But now we're seeing Larry Fink and TradFi, who runs the government, guys. I don't, that's not the other way around. TradFi, you know, doing, doing this now like it's a positive thing and everybody's all for it. And so, like, it's interesting that this is going on with Deadbox during this time where we've had this flip of this narrative to where, guys, this is about to come on an RWA channel. I tell you, we're about to talk about these RWAs, like, nonstop. And this, this is a tokenized asset. This is, this is a real-world asset over here he's talking about. Um, and, and so we already know the SEC hates this stuff. But, like, let's get into what did they do. Like, like the, the genesis of how, I guess, kind of the, the, the suit began and then where it is now. What happens, the SEC came in with two claims. They have a, a claim about an uh, un unregistered security, but then they had another claim for fraud. And they claimed that the debt box team or the uh, founders or whoever defrauded people of $50 million. And so they went to the judge, which is this is in the court documents. They went to the judge and basically said, oh, look, uh, they, they've been sending money offshore. They defrauded people of $50 million. We've got to get a restraining order on these people now. And so they, they did, you know, got that restraining order, and then a ton of the people who were involved in the project, everything's locked up. They can't pay for bills. They can't buy food. I mean, uh, wow. the, the, the fallout was real. It's like, crippling. Uh, crippling to these people's lives. And so the judge later lifted that restraining order, but the damage had been done. 
you know, you got three or four or five or six months or whatever, whatever yeah. restraining or you're, you're done. Like you got get foreclose your house or get rid of your cars or borrow money. Like how are you going to pay for attorneys? Like, cause they can see your wallet. So you can't move money off and pay stuff. Right. So that happened, that damage was definitely done. But the judge then, uh, the fraud charges, as I understand, they have been pushed off. And what's interesting is everybody I know in the debt box ecosystem who, who has purchased and know, everybody's happy. Yeah. I have zero complaints from the 30 or 40 people I've met uh, in, who live throughout Utah. It's, that's an amazing project. I love that project. Yeah. That's an amazing project. Not a single person is like, I got completely screwed and I hate these guys. I never heard that. So uh, now the as what's been released, obviously, is the SEC has been... Uh, Caught, reprimanded, yeah. 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 Like the judge is not happy. He he got duped. No, and this is something that that unfortunately, you know, a lot of people don't know about. Uh, and and so one person who's been talking about it a lot is actually Dave Schwartz, um, from from Ripple. He's one of the, uh, he's not the founder of Ripple, uh, but he kind of is because he was one of the co-founders when they relaunched and rebranded. Uh, Ripple started back in two thousand and four as I think Ripple Payments, and then. Uh, you know, many years later, it was bought by Arthur Brito and David Schwartz and uh, Brad, Gar Brad Garninghouse, one of their, or Chris Larson, I think, was, was there first. I, I can't remember. But uh, anyways, I, I can't remember if it was Brad or Chris was there originally, but Brad's a CEO now. But David Schwartz is still a CTO, and has a, he's a person a lot of people respect. And he's, he's got some wonky views on stuff, I think. And, and I don't mean he's wrong on things. Uh, what I mean is, y you look at David Schwartz and you watch the things he says, and then sometimes he comes up with this opinion He's very strong and adamant about it, and you're like, I would have never thought that this was the opinion that this guy had on this thing. Uh, he's very unpredictable, in my opinion, with his opinions. He would probably tell you he's predictable, and he'd tell you why. I don't know how the con where the connection is. So you know, he's got a lot of weird, a lot of interesting takes, and he's, he's very focused when he gets you know, kind of inserted into something. He's been had said some things about Deadbox. Kind of what, do you guys remember exactly what he said? Uh, uh, or do you know? No, you guys don't know. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, he was. I think we can, let, let's see if we can look it up. I bet if we look up Goldbox on the, the X-verse, uh, instead of the Twitter's verse now, uh, we can probably find it. So uh, that's actually the first place that I had heard uh, about Deadbox, I think, was one of these um, tweets that he said about it. Because uh, I had no idea what it is. Yeah. The mic, the mic, the mic, the mic, the mic, yeah. Uh, so Ripple CTO criticizes SEC misconduct in high-profile debt box case. Uh, now, uh, by the way, this is not one of the opinions that I would not expect David Schwartz to have, by the way. Uh, but it is interesting. Like, obviously, David Schwartz is going to speak out against this because uh, the SEC's, uh, look, they approve the ETF, and so I've said I'm going to go e a little bit easier on them. But when you read this story, it's hard to go easy on them, okay, guys? In a recent ex post Ripple CTO David Schwartz unveiled condemning details about U.S. SEC's questionable conduct. Uh, meanwhile, crypto industry, blah, 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 blah. Uh, he recently took to social media to express his shock and dismay over the SEC's actions in the debt box case. Notably, he criticized the SEC for seeking an emergency order that paralyzed businesses, accusing the commission of blatantly representing facts to secure the order before the opposing party could defend itself. However, this recent allegation, why is that marked out? That's, is that marked out or is it's that been stricken in? from the record? I, I don't. I, I'm going to not read that. Uh, guys, uh, strike that from the record as if I did not read it and then pretend that it has no bearing on what you do or say. Uh, looking at you judges. Okay, and jury. Uh, okay, uh, quoting Schwartz's comments, he stated, I've just read over the documents in the debt box case, and this is absolutely shocking behavior. Uh, these revelations bring to light the links to which the SEC went to freeze funds, causing irreparable damage to the crypto firm. Um, federal judge expresses concerns over the actions. This is what they were saying. David Schwartz highlights it. Uh, but the, the uh, judge's disapproval is primarily linked to the SEC's purported involvement in freezing millions of dollars in assets owned by the crypto company. Moreover, the court has requested the SEC to provide, like, how do you pay for a lawyer? How do you pay Oh, this sounds like another scam that I know of where they took the guy's company and then they used all his money to pay for their high-dollar lawyers and he had to completely start over and pay for everything from scratch. Uh, sorry. Uh, it sounds like, sounds like somebody else I know. Um, but anyways, uh, look, it's very interesting here. So basically they're cutting off them from being able to spend their legal funds. These people can't eat, right, basically. And I know it's like, guys, when your bank account is frozen, guys, it's rough out there. Uh, trust me, I've been there. 
So not for anything I did, but just because of a Coinbase transaction. It was literally just a regular everyday transaction. Um, it was a high amount because I was buying a house. It wasn't a, it was, I think, $75,000. It wasn't even a, a, over 100K. Uh, so uh, the point is, is that they can absolutely cripple you. And that's why we really want to, this is why, guys, we care about stuff like this, like with the Bitcoin ATM. And we care about adoption on boarding people because people have to learn how to survive without using the regular financial system or else when something like this happens to you, you don't understand how crippled you are, I think. If you have family and people with a lot of money you know, you can probably borrow some money or you got great credit, you go get a loan, but you can't get a loan probably because you just had everything froze. So you got to think about that. Um, so you might have to go pawn stuff maybe to be able to get access to cash so you can buy things. Uh, and that's why things like this are great uh, with our Bitcoin ATM, uh, with the Bitcoin ATM that's got Bitcoin available to buy on it. We bought some earlier on the show, if you missed that. Uh, so you can't buy it. But the, the point is, is you have to have backup plans. You can't just put all your faith in your bank account, guys. Uh, I've already told you guys that uh, have you guys heard, uh, do you guys know about, uh, what is it, the, the, the Bank Protection Act, it was called? Yeah. You know about the, B, was it BFPA? Yeah, yeah, it just expired. And uh, there's a SPAC that was created. Uh, I, I can ne I've been talking about so much of this stuff, it all, it all loops over. But there's a SPAC that was created for the sole uh, goal of is going to become the first private company to buy a bank's assets. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it's not, and, and, and when I say private company, it's not, uh, uh, it's not going to be a bank. It's not going to be a bank. Uh, it, whenever bank assets are sold, every time in history, it's been to another bank that gets the assets. This is a private SPAC that was created to buy. When we have a medium, a small to medium sized bank is going to fail most likely this year, according to what it looks like the setup is. Uh, remember, guys, uh, there's people up top that drive a lot of stuff that goes on. So uh, don't get too conspiratorial here uh, on this. Uh, but you guys know, we talk about a lot of this stuff, and a lot of this stuff, it, it, it happens. And, um, you know, there are a lot of people that last year, they, they manufactured a lot of that bank run stuff, guys. Uh, look, they used crypto to do it. They used crypto. They weaponized crypto to bring down a bunch of our companies and to make us all look bad and to clap some banks. They don't care about small and medium sized banks. And you know what's funny? I was saying, I don't wanna, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, end with this here. Uh, I wanted to say is last night I was watching uh, boring CNBC as I was saying. Why? Because it doesn't have a lot of commercials. I was barely watching it, but there was a guy talking and you know, he was saying, uh, first of all, you had somebody who came on there and talk about Meta. Uh, that's where she was, uh, you know, she was talking about how meta long term and, and investing stuff like that, uh, and then a guy came on and he started talking about bank assets, uh, bank stocks. Hey, you want to get on this one? You know, this one's looking pretty good. This one's good. He said, "Man, you know, some of these large banks. Man, I tell you, you want to look at them. And you know, what? also, you know, don't forget about. I, I think he said, don't forget about Wells Fargo. Maybe like Wells Fargo is the fifth biggest one. Uh, maybe it's not. I don't know which one's the bit Chase. You got Bank of America, Wells Fargo." Anybody know the other two major ones? Citibank and Ch that is Chase. I somebody named the fifth one. I don't know what the fifth one is. I don't know. Yeah, I know. I'm a bank expert. Banks, man. We're crypto, baby. No, it's, ne it's neither one of those. Um, it's one you hear. You're like, oh, yeah, of course, that one. Um, but anyways, uh, the point here is he said, man, these things get strong and these firm these. And he specifically said, I kid you not. Like, I just covered this stuff last week. And he goes, I tell you, I would definitely stay away from the small and medium-sized bank stocks. Guys, all the money's going to the top. All the money's going to the top. They're collapsing these banks one by one. They're manufacturing these. Manufacture, solve, monetize. Manufacture the crisis, so come in with a solution, and then monetize it. And that is the way the traditional finance and the elites work. And that's not hyperbole. That's not a rumor conspiracy. Just look at it. It's all right in front of you. It's pretty obvious. So I uh, want to thank Justin... Uh, Dustin uh, and uh, Jeremy for coming on the show today and talking about this because it, it's absolutely amazing what you guys are doing. And, and look, uh, watch this company. I'm not just saying that uh, because they're on the show and we're partners with them. I'm not saying that because we have ATMs with them uh, or they're on the show or I'm blowing smoke. I'm like, how many machines did you have last year? Like how many last year, a year ago? Um, as of March last year, we only had 65 and now we have 600. 600. Uh, how many regular ATMs do you have? 
I have just over 700 regular ATMs and process over 2,600 yeah. others. 2,600 others. Yeah. Uh, this company has been very successful already. They're move. This ATM company is moving into crypto because they're into crypto, uh, and so it's really cool. Yes. April first. April first. And uh, guys, April Fool's Day. I know. What you guys are gonna realize is for uh, almost a year we've been April fooling you with Bitcoin the whole time, uh, and this uh, Bitcoin ATM is actually I'm gonna take over the world that day. Uh, on the side of the machine, the me is going to come real life AR. And I'm going to steal all your stuff. Yeah, so so 90% of our <laughs> portfolio will be offering Bincoin, Ethereum, and Bitcoin. XRP is coming. There's a few machines that we have to get the software updated on. But as of Monday, you'll be able to walk into a store based on the map of btmmachines.com, and you'll see Ben's face on that machine. Wow. And I do believe we have um, an announcement coming later with Debtbox, but I, I don't know if I'm supposed to be talking about that right now. Later. 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 Here for if you're not machine, I mean, you can always connect with us in order to do the oh, over-the-counter transaction. Yeah. So OTC is very easy, too. doesn't yeah, even require to, to leave your house. Machines.com. It's the link right under the map, and the map is the first thing. Yeah. The promo code. Ben 10? Ben 10. We did that because of that TV show. Uh, you guys know I stole my segment from Rand Nooner. I'm going to steal my promo code from Ben 10 TV show. Uh, shout out to it. Uh, but what is that promo? So it's B-E-N-1-0, correct? Yeah, BIN-10, e and you yep. can use it at any Bitcoin ATM or on the OTC form. There you go. So you want, What's it's that? For, it's for any crypto, not just Bitcoin. The OTC? The OTC is for any crypto. Uh, you guys, uh, website, one more time? Well, the, the, the discount code is for any crypto that we offer on the BTM or OTC. Oh, okay. Sorry, I, was, I understand that now. Sorry. Uh, so thank you for clarifying that. So you guys have to understand, okay, like, look, I love our guests, and I'm listening, but also I've got to also pay attention to the chat, so I had to pay attention to the show, and so it happens to Justin all the time. I say, Justin, what? And he's like, oh, man, uh, sorry. It's because he was moving an image. Like, the show is, like, yeah. this is a multifaceted show. We all have a lot to do. So, um, you know, some, sometimes I may ask a question, and then I see, and I got to ask a follow-up because these people are asking stuff. So, uh, anyways, wasn't trying to be disrespectful there. But um, the, the point being uh, with that, um, is, uh, I can't remember because I lost my train of thought because I was too busy apologizing. Uh, what was the last thing I said? I forgot. Who knows? Guys, it, this has been a great show. Uh, we appreciate you guys. Uh, and uh, what I said was, what is it? the link one more time to be able to get to the website to get more information? BTMMachines.com. BTM Machines. Now, I want to clarify. Is that BTM Machines or is it BT machines. Is there, are there two M's? There's two M's. Two BTM M's. BTM machines, same as atmmachines.com, but with the B. There you go. You guys got it. atmmachines.com or btmmachines.com. Check them out. Bitcoin getting represented. Uh, guys, that's. Uh, I, I see one question here. Vism, Oc Vism Oculus says, Hi, Ben. Do you also talk about meme coins in your show? Uh, guys, starting next week, um, uh, we are going to be. Well, I talked about it the other day. Look, and this is why I brought up the crypto banner thing, okay? Uh, because we're going to stop calling it Crypto Banner. Okay, that was dumb, obviously. It was just for a joke. Uh, and it, we, we stretched it really far, and I really enjoyed it. Uh, our, little, our, our little toothpick arm ran. It's holding the banner. is so funny. And shout out to Molly for making those incredible logos. Uh, but uh, the point is, is we're getting rid of that little segment. We're, we're just going to, the show is, is going to be the segments, like, it, you know, headlines, market watch. And we're going to have a rundown for you guys again. I know a lot of you guys like the rundown. Starting on Monday, we're going to have a rundown, show you guys what's coming on the show. First hour of the show is going to be a normal show you all are used to, the segments, uh, you know, uh, more similar to the style I was doing the other day, like you guys know. And then the second half of the show is going to be called the Alpha Hour. And this is where we're going to talk about only coins and only things that are going to make you money. Uh, Cassie's gonna, it's going to be me and Cassie on the couch over there. Um, and we're going to be doing Triple uh, X where we do three Twitter posts. But all the Twitter posts are going to be things about making money and coins that are doing well. Uh, that you might want to look at. So uh, we're going to do that. We're going to still look at YouTubers talking about uh, the cr what they're talking about, viral videos. And then we're going to do, uh, you know, going to move, instead of calling it Blockchain Basement, uh, guys, and I want everybody to know, some people may have seen uh, that they're pushing back on some stuff, uh, hitting that work on some of this. Uh, we are not going to stop calling Blockchain Basement Blockchain Basement uh, because we're intimidated by them or anything. Uh, I just think that show's stupid that they do over there, and I don't want to be represented by it. Uh, and so instead... 
uh, in, around the blockchain is played out, guys. Uh, I, I'm 67% owner of that company still. That's unquestioned. Nobody questions that. TJ doesn't question that. The judge doesn't question it. No one questions. 67% owner. I can use my brands if I want. I create all of them. Uh, blockchain basement around the blockchain. Uh, we created those. They're mine. I can use them. But uh, they don't make sense for what we're doing. And so instead of like calling it that, we're just not going to call it that. Uh, so the second half of the show, uh, you're going to have Bitboy Crypto Morning Show, and then you're going to have the Alpha Hour, where we're going to do some of the stuff on the ba on the couch that we were talking about. So that's going to be that's that is official. We're not going to be changing. We're getting rid of most of the pre-recorded content because you guys hate that. Uh, we're going to give you the show you want, but still the show I want to do still. Uh, so excited about that. Next week's going to be awesome. Can't wait. You guys check out the videos this week coming on uh, those YouTubers and their picks. Can't wait to rank those guys. BTM Machines, thank you so much for being here. Appreciate Thanks. you guys, Justin, uh, uh, Dustin, and Jeremy. And guys, uh, that's all we got for today. Uh, Bitboy out.